The Oregon coast is pretty beautiful, isn't it? I fish and crap here for many years now and I never really get tired of it. I've seen many beautiful sunrises because I tend to go out two to three hours before. I can't get enough of it. It's just one of the many reasons why I love surf fishing and crabbing on the coast. But many times surf fishing is pretty dangerous because of large swells. In order to stay safe, I check the surf forecast before heading out. And so this video is in response to a user who asked me, how do I check the swell before I go surf fishing? You know, what do I look for? You know, how to be safe out there? So let's get on with the video. And basically just remember number five um, or more specifically, five five or five foot five seconds i feel that swells around or under five foot and five seconds apart presents a safe condition for surf fishing when you get to six foot swells or higher the chances of sneaker waves increase quite a bit so you put yourself in danger yes i've heard people you know before about you know they tell me They've been fishing in 10 foot swells and they aren't bothered by it. Well, <laughs> that tells me that they are either full of it or they're about 15 feet tall. And I'm sure no human is 15 feet tall. So it's definitely the former. But of course, if you're a really tall person, you can probably tolerate bigger waves. Um, but you can get away with it so many times before it catches up with you. So just be careful, okay? Don't gamble with your life. Your safety is very important. We all have different tolerance level, but I can say 100% with confidence that the 5-5 rule would be and should be your absolute limit for safety reasons. I will post links to websites I use to check for swell heights. So be sure to check out those websites in the uh, video description and be sure to bookmark it. Remember, the forecast changes. You know, Mother Nature doesn't stay the same and it changes a lot. I usually check it the night before I head out. Um, it's a must, so just do it. Today is December 31st, 2022, and here is a screenshot of what the swells look like for the next several days. This screenshot is taken from Magic Seaweed, and I use Magic Seaweed. Actually, I only use Magic Seaweed. Well, I, I use other ones too, uh, Surf Forecast. Um, those two sites are the only ones I use, and I compare them. Usually, they're about pretty consistent. And as you can see, it's unfishable. The waves are big. The period is longer than somebody's mother-in-law. It's quite, quite scary. Okay, so what is a wave period? It's just a time between two wave heights, you know. Um, a wave that's five foot with a five second period is more tolerable and preferable over the same wave height with a 15 second period. So with a 15 second period, the waves will hit you and it'll pass. It'll pass by you and it'll keep passing and then you're still waiting and it keep passing and going and going and you're left wondering when is this wave going to end? Basically, longer period waves ride further up the beach. This is <coughs> excuse me, this is undesirable because you really can't advance forward to make a cast. You would need to wait until the wave pass. Then you go forward and you make the cast. However, Remember, all that water going behind you has to go back into the ocean eventually, right? And so when you think the wave has passed, you advance forward to make your cast and the water behind you is rushing back. But at the same time, another wave has approached. So you have a buildup and the wave stacks. And then, well, you're in waist deep, maybe chest deep water. And you know what? You better know how to swim like a seal because you'll likely get pulled into the ocean. When I take out my son who just turned 13 last October, I look for swells that are three or four foot with a period of around five seconds or less. And this this situation, this condition, um, I feel safe taking him out. So, so basically look for waves that are five foot or less and for the period you can probably have a little bit of variance. 
I would say five to eight seconds would be all right. I think periods over eight seconds is a little annoying because of what I mentioned above. Now, let's talk about wind speed. I feel wind speed is more of an annoyance rather than a safety issue. I mean, if the swells are within safe limits, say three to four feet, but the wind is 20 miles per hour or more, then the wind is really annoying because it just whips and drags your line. When you make a cast, the wind just like, it just rips your line off the spool and immediately it makes a long arc like 100 feet out. And because your line is so far out, it's kind of hard to detect bites. I know some will say you can use like a four or five ounce weight. Well, <laughs> I don't know. For me, when I fish, I, I actually like to feel the tug. I like to feel the fish pulling. Uh, four or five ounce, um, that's a little too big. You know, you really can't feel much. Um, it's just like pulling in a giant rock. And in that case, you know, if, if, if you want to use a big, you know, four or five ounce weight, go for it. You know, there's no right or wrong way to fish. It's all up to what you can tolerate. As for me, I use a two ounce. I rarely use a three ounce or more. And if I have to use a three ounce just to compensate for the win, well, then I know it's time to go home because I'm just not gonna waste my time on it. So to avoid any situations like this, that's why I always check the swell and check the wind before going out. It's not rocket science. For me, if the wind is below 10 miles per hour, then I, I will likely head out. Um, anything above, I would rather just not waste my time with. So in conclusion, um, for wave heights and period, just follow the 5-5 five, five rule. 5 foot or 5 seconds with a plus 3 second period. Wind speed 10 miles per hour or less. So just to make your trip more enjoyable. And be sure to check out the links I post below in the video description. Bookmark those websites and be sure to check them religiously. And thank you for watching and I hope you guys catch a lot of fish in 2023. Have fun, stay safe, happy new year, and tight line folks. See you next time.